We now arrive at part three, our final installment of our chapter one lecture on electronic structure and bonding. In today's discussion, we will learn about the amazing world of acids and bases as applied to organic chemistry. So here's today's lineup. After today's lecture, you should be able to, one, identify conjugate acids and conjugate bases, two, identify the products of a reaction between an organic acid and an organic base. Three, explain what a pKa value is and use pKa values to sort acids by their acidities. Four, explain how an acid structure affects its pKa value. And five, use pKa values to determine which side of an acid-base equilibrium reaction is favored. Although I realize that this isn't a completely accurate definition, technically speaking. I like to keep things simple, dang it. <laughs> Thus, stated simply, acidity is a measure of how easily a compound gives off an H plus atom. So if I have some kind of compound, and it's attached to a hydrogen atom, if that compound releases the hydrogen atom, we could say that the compound is an acid. Before moving on, I have to remind you of something. Every time you see a bond written as a straight line, such as the one between this hydrogen atom and this compound, it really represents two electrons being shared by two atoms. In this case, between this hydrogen atom and whatever atom it's bonded to in the compound. With that said, here's what occurs in the process of releasing a hydrogen. Our compound keeps the two electrons it was formerly sharing with the hydrogen and releases the hydrogen as an H plus. In the process, the compound now gets a negative charge. Why? The reason is because the compound kept the two electrons that it was formerly sharing with the hydrogen and released the hydrogen as an H plus. Got it? OK, good. Now the new compound, which has a minus charge where the hydrogen formerly was, is called the conjugate base of this original compound, which we would call an acid. So this compound stuck to the acidic H is an acid. And this compound, where a minus charge has taken the place of that acidic H, is called that acid's conjugate base. One more detail. Just so you know, we chemists often call H plus atoms just protons, because that's really all they are. So let's take a look at some amazing examples. This molecule, which is called acetic acid, is found in vinegar. When it loses a proton, the acidic proton being this one right here, it forms this product, which is called acetate. Acetate is the conjugate base of acetic acid. Ready for another one? When this molecule, which is called hydrochloric acid, gives off a proton, which is this acidic proton right here, it forms chloride along with the H plus that it releases. Chloride is the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid. And here's one more. This molecule right here, called sulfuric acid, H2SO4, has an acidic proton at this position. Now, if we want to be really technical, it actually has two acidic protons, but I'm trying to keep it simple. So when this first acidic proton is released, it forms this molecule, hydrogen sulfate, along with H+. Note that what has happened is a minus charge has replaced the hydrogen that originally was found in the acid, sulfuric acid. This molecule, hydrogen sulfate, is the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. So here's the bottom line. If you take an acid and replace its acidic proton, its acidic H, with a minus charge, the resulting compound is called the acid's conjugate base. Similarly, if you take a base and replace its minus charge with a proton or an H, the resulting compound is called that base's conjugate acid. So in other words, if you take the conjugate base and go backwards and replace its minus charge with an H, the resulting acid is the conjugate acid of that base. I hope that makes sense. Now this seems like a great place to take a break and drink an Aloha pineapple smoothie from Jamba Juice, by which <laughs> I really mean it's time for us to do another example from our problem set. Here's the question. Which of the following is not a conjugate acid base pair? Now thus far, I've told you that if you replace an acid's 
acidic proton with a minus charge, you make an acid's conjugate base. But what if you start out with an acid that has a positive charge from the very beginning? Does its conjugate base still end up with a negative charge? Well, if your acid already has a positive charge, then all you do is remove one of its acidic protons, its acidic H, and then you give the compound a neutral charge. The resulting new compound is still that acid's conjugate base. Similarly, I've also told you that if you replace a base's minus charge with an H, then you're going backwards to making its conjugate acid. But what if your base doesn't have a minus charge? What if it starts out being neutral? Well, if your base is neutral, then what you do is you replace one of its lone electron pairs with a proton or an H and give the resulting compound a positive charge. The resulting compound is, of course, the conjugate acid of that base. Now, I realize that everything on this slide might sound pretty dang confusing. So let me illustrate by giving you some examples. Question number one, what is the conjugate base of H3O plus? Question number two, the conjugate acid of H2O is? Now, in order to properly address these two questions, I'm going to actually show some footage from the doc cam. This first question gives us H3O plus hydronium as an acid and asks us to determine the conjugate base. In order to determine a conjugate base, all you do is take your acid, you remove one hydrogen, and you decrease the charge by one. So I'll remove one hydrogen in the formula. It now becomes H2O. And I decrease the overall charge by 1. It's now plus 1. I subtract 1 from that. It makes it 0. So H2O is the conjugate base of H3O+. The next question, in contrast, gives us H2O as a base and asks us to determine its conjugate acid. To do that, all you do is add one hydrogen and increase the charge by 1. So it's sort of the exact opposite of determining the conjugate base from an acid. So here's my formula. I add one hydrogen. It becomes H3O. And I increase the overall charge by 1. So it's 0 here. So the overall charge becomes plus 1. So H3O plus hydronium ion is the conjugate acid of H2O. So here's the final bottom line. To draw an acid's conjugate base, just remove one proton from the acid and reduce its charge by 1. To draw a base's conjugate acid, just add one proton to the base and increase its charge by one. Got it? I hope so. Let's put your knowledge to the test by looking at this question. Which species in this equilibrium acid-base equation acts as a base in the following reaction? Now, I got to pause and say, what in the world is this question really asking? <laughs> Well, what it's doing is it's asking you to identify on the left side and the right side of the equation the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. Can we do it? I think so. But I think we'd probably best do this by walking through it on the doc cam. In the context of our problems here, a base is something that receives or steals a hydrogen, and an acid is something that gives up a hydrogen. So let's take a look at this. Let's look at H2SO4, this molecule right here, and try to figure out what it turns into as we go from left to right. Which of the things on the right look like H2SO4? Kind of. Well, it's this HSO4 minus. It kind of looks like H2SO4. So this H2SO4 gave rise to this molecule HSO4 minus, or hydrogen sulfate. So what happened? Did H2SO4 steal a proton from something else in order to become HSO4 minus? Or did it give up a proton? Remember, when I say proton, I'm talking about a hydrogen here. Now, yeah, it gave up a proton, didn't it? Because it goes from having two protons here to having just one. So going from left to right, it gives up a proton, which means that this molecule is an acid. And this molecule over here is its conjugate base. So I'll write down conjugate base there. Now let's look at this other molecule right here, HNO3. That happens to be nitric acid. What does it become as we go from left to right? What does it do? Well, the molecule that looks kind of like HNO3 is this molecule, H2NO3. Kind of looks like it, except slightly different. So what's the difference? Well, HNO3 received one more proton than it had as it goes from left to right. So here it's only got one. Here it's got two. So because it received a proton, this molecule right here is behaving as a base 
and this molecule right here is its conjugate acid. You can see then that uh, on the left side of any of these acid-base equilibrium equations, there's always something that's an acid, and the other thing has to be the base. And on the right side, there's always a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. The question, of course, asks which of these molecules are behaving like bases, and it's going to be this one right here and this one right here, which I believe are molecules 2 and 4. Whew.